What's going on my people? I hope all is well. So at the time of actually making this video, this is William from the future after all of the stuff and content that was presented in the video. So the reason why I'm making this clip as the intro is because it turns out that this video is actually pretty long. But that being said, I didn't want to split up the video into two separate videos. I just wanted to keep it all as one big raw and uncut video just for you guys to watch it in its essence because I really do feel it'll help all of you beginners out, especially when it comes to setting up a lower body routine with zero equipment at all. All you're going to need is the floor beneath you. With that being said, for you guys who don't know who I am, the name is William Santiago III. I'm a NASM certified personal trainer based out of New York City. So if you're looking to get into the best shape of your life, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at will to gain I do both in person and online coaching. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, we could still get this work in together. All that being said, if you actually like the video, leave a like for me, it really helps me out. And if you like the content and appreciate what I have to bring to you guys, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and let me know what you want to see next. That being said, let's get into the video. I want to go over a little bit of what it actually takes to set up an optimal lower body routine, just so you guys can take this video and not only take the workouts that I'm about to show you, but to also take the knowledge that I'm about to give you guys so you can then apply it to however you decide to set up your own lower body routine catered to yourself and your goals moving forward. So when it comes to exercise in general, what we want to focus on is moving through 360 degrees of motion. The lower body is no different. Reason being is if we just focus on one move, plane of motion or if we're just fixated on one exercise, what's going to happen is we'll have certain muscles become overdeveloped and other muscles become underdeveloped. This overdevelopment of some muscles and underdevelopment of others is what's going to lend itself to muscular imbalances. These muscular imbalances are then going to lead itself to injuries. The injuries are going to lead itself to you having to go get surgery and then rehab. And then all of that could have been avoided had you optimized your protocol. That being said, want to make sure that you don't just focus on one exercise and hammer it out and then expect to see the results everywhere else. No, you wanna make sure you have a balanced approach to what it is that you decide to do as far as your exercise routine goes. So 360 degrees of motion, people. So the second thing I feel that is important for you to know is the importance of unilateral exercises. Now, what does unilateral mean? It means using one limb at a time. So what for, in the case of lower body, using one leg at a time. The reason why we want to be able to use one leg at a time is because even though we may or may not realize it, we might actually be favoring one leg over the other in bilateral movements, meaning using both limbs at the same time. So let's say we're actually doing a squat, maybe without realizing it, we're actually favoring using our left leg versus our right leg. This can then lend itself to what I mentioned previously, more muscular imbalances and thus lending itself to injury down the road and then we don't want to have that happen, right? So we want to make sure that within our protocol, we are implementing some form of unilateral work to make sure we're dealing with any asymmetry that we have in our bodies and that we're optimizing our results once again. Now, the third thing and the most often overlooked topic as far as lower body training goes is what is going on at your feet. See, the feet is the root of our power when it comes to generating force into the ground to then be able to optimally perform any lower body exercise. If we're not optimizing what's going on at the ground at our feet, it's going to affect everything else that happens up the entire kinetic chain, thus once again leading to possible asymmetries, possible muscular imbalances, possible injuries, and once again, could have been avoided had you optimized what was going on at the feet. Now, there's two ways we can do this. First things first, if we're actually doing strength-based movements for our lower body, we want to make sure we're actually using the right footwear. 
So here I have two different shoes, right? On my left hand, I have an Adidas Ultra Boost shoe, and on my right hand, I have a Reebok Nano CrossFit shoe. Now, you may be looking at both shoes and thinking they're both sneakers. Yes, they're both sneakers. However, both of these sneakers serve a different purpose. See, the Ultra Boost is a running shoe. With the Ultra Boost being a running shoe, you may notice that the Boost technology that this shoe has is very plush, very firm, and it's meant to be that way to help you with runs and to help you with your stride and all that good stuff. However, another thing that this shoe has is a slight elevated heel counter here at the back of the foot, which then elevates your heel ever so slightly. In some aspects, this could be good for exercise, and in other aspects, this could not be good for exercise. However, the reason why you actually wouldn't want to use this for working out is because of the boost technology. See, when you're actually performing lower body movements, you want to be able to feel the ground under you. Performing certain movements such as squats, such as deadlifts, and so on and so forth, is going to feel like you're squatting in pillows, right? The last thing you need is to be squatting in something like this or deadlifting in something like this. So get that out of the way. What you want to be using is something like this. Why would you want to use a shoe like this? Well, first of all, is the sole of the shoe. The sole of the shoe, instead of being slightly elevated, is actually relatively flat. Secondly, on the inside, it's solid. You can actually feel the ground beneath you, thus lending itself to a lot more stability with performing certain exercises. And lastly, this helps with the support around the ankle, around the heel here, to just give you that extra boost when it comes to performing certain strength exercises that require you to have that full ground contact. Now, do you actually need to spend $120, $130 on a shoe like this? No, get that out of the way. What you actually would want to invest in is a pair of Converse. That simple, 40 bucks shouldn't set you back too much or if possible, even work out barefoot if wherever it is that you're working out, you're able to do so. Reason why is the more contact we can actually feel with the floor, the better we'll actually be able to optimize the lower body exercises that we're doing. So the second thing you wanna focus on with what's going on at the feet, other than the footwear you have on, is what the feet are actually doing. So with any lower body exercise, in order to optimize the amount of force transfer you're applying into the ground, you wanna focus on actually grabbing the floor with your feet. Now, how do we do this? Well, something I learned from Dr. Aaron Horstick from Squat Academy is you wanna apply something called the tripod foot. So when it comes to the tripod foot, you wanna think about applying three points of contact within your foot. So pardon my feet, but allow me to demonstrate what that is. So with your foot, right? The three points of contact we want to focus on is right here below the big toe, right here below the pinky toe, and the heel. When focusing on those three points of contact, we're able to screw our feet into the floor, thus being a lot more stable than we normally wouldn't be if we're not focusing on what's going on at the feet. So with those two things out of the way, the footwear or lack of footwear, and actually what we're doing at the feet, let us get into the actual exercises of the day. Now, before we actually get into any form of exercise, we wanna make sure that we warm up the body accordingly. The reason why we wanna do this is to one, make sure that our body's primed for the exercises that we're gonna do, and two, to help avoid injury. Because the last thing we wanna do is work out while the muscle is cold, because this could lead easily to inducing a muscle strain. So what I'm doing here is just some basic jumping jacks, anywhere between 50 to 100 repetitions, just to increase my overall core body temperature and to break a sweat. I'll then follow up the jumping jacks with some arm circles here. I'm looking to do anywhere between 10 to 20 repetitions in both going towards the front and going towards the back, as you can see right here. And it could vary from day to day as to how many repetitions I decide to do because some days I'm a little bit looser than others, other days I'm a little bit more tense. 
but essentially this is what I like to do. So then I'll follow that up with some arm swings, alternating which arm goes above and which one goes below. Same thing applies here, just trying to loosen up the overall musculature surrounding the shoulder girdle just to make sure that my shoulders are ready to go. And then I'll follow that up with some vertical arm swings just to further loosen up all the musculature surrounding the shoulder, the T-spine, thoracic spine, mid-back for those of you guys who don't know, and the lat switch insert under the uh, armpit. So then I'll follow that up by dynamic lower body stretching. I'll start off with some vertical leg swings. So reason why I'm balancing here on one leg is two reasons. One, I like to do this to warm up one side of the hip accordingly. So to make sure the glutes are firing the right way and to make sure that the knee is in alignment and to make sure that my feet are actually grabbing the floor accordingly. So that way I am primed for any unilateral exercise that I got to get to doing. So same thing applies here anywhere between 10 to 20 repetitions. Just all depends on how loose or how tight I am on that specific day. I'll then follow that up by lateral leg swings because once again, if you were listening earlier in the video, we are trying to move in 360 degrees of motion, people. It is extremely important to have the body primed to move in every direction possible to help optimize your movement, optimize your workout, and to prevent any form of injury. So once again, with the lateral leg swings, same rules apply anywhere between 10 to 20 repetitions, focusing on balance and focusing on keeping keen. So then I'll just follow that up with some basic um, ankle rotations here, going clockwise and counterclockwise. Once again, you guessed it, anywhere between 10 to 20 repetitions, just depending on how loose or how tight I feel in that specific area. And I'll make sure to do both sides, people. You gotta make sure you do both sides. You don't wanna just have one side loose and then one side tense. That's a recipe for disaster. But once you're done with this warm up, you should be ready to go for the actual workout at hand. So the first workout we have is basic bodyweight squats. So as you can see here, I'm basically just cueing the position of the feet. They could be flared out slightly anywhere between 10 to 30 degrees outward, depending on your anthropometry, basically your body structure. And you always want to ensure that the knees stay in line with the toes. You don't want the knees to cave in or to over pronate outward. This could once again be a recipe for disaster and lead to certain injuries that you may not want to have. So as far as the squats go, you'd probably want to perform anywhere between three sets of 10 to 15 reps starting off. Here I'm just demonstrating all of the mechanics of the actual squat. So with this squat, what we're focusing on is two things. We're focusing on making sure the hips go back and down at the same time, whilst allowing the knees to travel forward. Because as you can see here, also I'm engaging my glutes to make sure that I don't put any strain on my lower back. But the reason why we want to make sure the hips go back and down is to make sure we're not putting too much stress on the knees, but to also make sure that we're optimizing the squat because we don't want a perfectly vertical shin angle either. So you want to make sure you're pushing the hips back and allowing the knees to travel forward as much as necessary. So then the next movement at hand, what we're going to do here is some single legged RDLs, single legged Romanian deadlifts. So once again, this is a actual, we're going from a bilateral movement to a unilateral hinging movement. So we just did a squat, now we have to do a hinge. It's very important that with the hinging movement, all we're focusing on is a slight bend of the knee and really pushing those hips back. With this movement, I'm really focusing on grabbing the floor as much as I can to maintain stabilization. And I'm using my arms here outward to help just counterbalance myself so I could feel a little bit more steady. So as you can see here from the front, I want to make sure that my knees do not cave in. You want to make sure that the knees stay in line with the toe. If the knee caves in, as you can see there, as I demonstrated, you're going to fall off balance right away. So you want to make sure that the knee stays in line with the toe and that you're actually hinging at the hips. So there you go right there. If done properly, you should feel very, very stable. You should actually feel the glutes and the hamstrings firing like crazy with this one. Honestly, this is one of my favorite go-to exercises with or even without weight. It's just phenomenal. So the next movement at hand is now going to be a lateral movement, people. Once again, 360 degrees of motion. A lot of people do not move laterally. They usually just focus on the squat and the hinge. You want to make sure you also get lateral motion. So that being said, what we're doing here are Cossack squats. 
So with the Kazakh squat, you want to make sure you actually place your feet really wide apart, right? So that way you can actually reach optimal depth. This is really going to fire the adductors. So the muscle is in the middle of the thigh along with the glutes and the hamstrings and the quadriceps. So total body, total lower body exercise once again, however, in the lateral plane. So with this one, we're really focusing same concepts apply, make sure the knee stays in line with the toes. And then here laterally, I'm performing it just so you can see what's going on from the side as well, because a lot of people mess this up. Sometimes when people perform this exercise, they fail to actually hinge properly at the hips, thus preventing them from doing the movement optimally. And once again, like every lower body exercise you do, you want to make sure you squeeze, squeeze those glutes at the top, preserve the lower back, get that glute activation. And oh man, you could really see the legs firing right there. Look, look at the hamstrings working. Look at those glutes, the quadriceps. They fire at people. This one, once again, another great money maker exercise. So next one we're gonna do here, another unilateral exercise. However, instead of going laterally, now we're focusing on the lunge position. So what we're gonna do here is split squats. So with the split squat, we want even distribution between the front and the back leg. You wanna make sure that heel stays elevated. A lot of people, when they perform these, the heel is flat, thus lending itself to feeling it a little bit weird when you actually perform it. So make sure that rear heel is elevated and you have even force distribution between both legs. So here's how it's supposed to look from the front. Once again, remember, everything stays in line. Don't want the knee to pronate inward. You don't want it to pronate too far outward. You want to keep the hips square and perform the movement accordingly. Full range of motion all the way down, all the way up. Try to slightly touch the knee on the floor. Do not make it crash on the floor because then you could actually hurt yourself really bad. That's the last thing we want here, ladies and gentlemen. So the last exercise is gotta be calves. Now here, that's how you don't do calves because that's horrible. Don't feel that at all. What you wanna do is pause at the top, right? And stretch at the bottom, full range of motion with this one, people. Really, really feel the engagement in the calf muscles firing here. And the reason why I'm actually doing them on a staircase is for that added range of motion. So get to it people that is the workout for the day so that was the video my people i definitely know it was a long one but if you watched it in its entirety i really hope you took something away from this video and i really hope you actually try out the workout that i laid out for you guys i definitely feel like it is a very optimized approach to a beginner lower body setup that being said if you like the video, leave a like down below. It really helps me out. If you like the content that I produce for y'all, consider subscribing, turn on the post notifications. And that being said, more videos coming to you guys soon. Until next time, stay safe.